Yeah, and meanwhile, Senator Booker's fellow Democrats celebrating 100 days since taking back control of the House. With Nancy Pelosi, the speaker there, calling the milestone among the most productive in history. Lawmakers gathered at an event this week hoping to create a united front on the looming showdowns on immigration, health care, and spending. Now let's bring in Kristen Hahn. She's a Democratic strategist and former chief political advisor for the Blue Dog Coalition. Also with us is Kevin Sheridan. He's a former community communication director to vice presidential nominee Paul Ryan and former senior advisor for the Romney Ryan ticket. All right, Kristen, since it's your party, you're up first. Uh, yep. We mentioned some of the issues that are facing uh, the House Democrats. What grade would you give the House Democrats 100 days in? What grade? Who's excelling? Yeah. And is anyone messing up the curve? Well, I, I think that we have the most, uh, first of all, the most diverse caucus in, in history, and I think that that's an asset. There's a lot of, of talk about, you know, division within the caucus, but I think having a lot of different voices from, from all across the country is, is actually a good thing. And, and, and I would say that, you know, the, the Democrats in the House um, are willing to work with the Republicans in the Senate and, and Donald Trump on, on, on any number of different issues. We were able to actually pass pretty monumental criminal justice reform uh, where Senator Dick Durbin, a Democrat in the Senate, took the lead uh, with Jared Kushner. And, and that was, you know, I don't think enough attention was paid to that because it was a pretty big deal. So I think that there's a lot that we can do all together. But let's keep in mind that, 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 that the Democrats control the House of Representatives, but the, the, the Senate's controlled by, by the Republicans. Right. We'll so talk we about all that need to come second. together. I, yeah. I, I get your point. We'll talk about that in a second. But I, I, and, and hang on, Kevin. I'm going to jump in, get you, get you jump in a second. But sticking with you, Kristen, mm -hmm. because you've talked about the diversity, the diverse voices yep. in, uh, in, the, in the House right now, which is a good thing. But are they able to, have they found their footing in terms of taking the, the ideas from all the various places that are now being contributed and trying to figure out a way to make that work for the House Democrats? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. Um, there's a lot of attention paid to kind of the, the far left, your Ocasio-Cortezes, those, those type of people. I think there's not enough attention paid to people like Stephanie Murphy. Um, she's head of the, the current Blue Dog Coalition, but has been working um, diligently uh, behind the scenes to make changes to say, the rules package, which is, you know, the rules that govern what comes to the floor. For the first time since 2001, she negotiated a bipartisan uh, rules package, with, okay. which passed with Republican votes. So I think that there are smaller things that are happening that aren't necessarily people aren't paying attention to. All right, Kevin, you get to grade now. You get to grade <laughs> the House Dems on balance, <laughs> on balance. I want you to grade them on working with the president as well as working with the president as well as providing checks and balances. How are they doing? Well, I sympathize with Kristen, who, uh, you know, does work with the Blue Dogs. And, and I, the, right now, I would not give them the A grade out of that caucus. The, uh, the left, uh, you know, the freshmen in that caucus have clearly um, captured the headlines, captured the energy of the party. Uh, if you couple that with what the, uh, the presidential candidates are doing, uh, where Bernie Sanders is leading the field and everybody has pretty much adopted the same uh, very far left positions on Medicare and uh, Medicare for all and, uh, you know, trillions of dollars in new spending on, green, on a Green New Deal and everything else. Um, the Democrats, the House Democrats, uh, you know, their agenda hasn't been much more than general opposition to Donald Trump, which we know they, they partially won on that because of uh, some concerns in the, in, the, in the suburbs with his temperament, I guess you could say, but it was mostly but I mean, on if, just... If, and to that point, just jumping in for a second, if in fact you're pointing out that the Dems won, won on that issue or yeah. issues to be able to push back on the president, I mean, that's why they're there. As we all know, elections have consequences. So are they doing their job in that regard? I guess you could make an argument that that's what they were sent to Washington to do, but that won't be enough to go into 2020 and, and win again, not with a strong economy, not with President Trump, uh, you know, largely accomplishing many of the goals that he ran on. He's going to have a pretty strong campaign message going into 2020 with the world at peace and the economy growing and people, you know, feeling better about their uh, their jobs and their personal situations economically, what are the Democrats going to come back with? That socialism's great and uh, let's throw this president out and, and you know, turn towards uh, this entire, you know, huge spending, huge new government programs. 
I don't see a lot of interest in that from the swing voters that delivered both President Trump in 2016 and then Democrats in 2018. I think it's going to it will likely swing back in 2020, and uh, and House Democrats could be on the outs again. You know, Kevin, can, can I just can I, can I respond to one thing really Go quickly? Ahead. I was like, it just, uh, you know, Kevin says that that all Democrats have adopted these ideas of of Medicare for all, and that's just blatantly not true. If you actually look at statements by you know, most of the House Democrats, they are, they're not taking those, those left-wing positions. Agreed that, I do agree with them, that, that the, the members on the far left have done a good job of capturing uh, the audience, but um, there are a lot that in no way are, are, every, are every member of the Democratic caucus in the House adopting the idea of, of Medicare for All or a Green New okay. Deal. They're actually pushing back. Okay, I let you do that quickly. Thank you. Yes or no, <laughs> Kristen, though, because Kevin made some points. He says basically, look, the economy is good. The president has a strong chance of being reelected. Is there anything the House Dems can do to lay down the foundation for those candidates out there to for you guys to regain the House? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, that Kevin's right. I think that the president has a strong chance of being reelected. What our guys need to do is just stay local and talk to their constituents. I mean, a lot of these presidential candidates are going to take up a lot of the the, 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 the space and the airwaves, but they just need to do their jobs, uh, keep their nose to the ground, talk to their to their constituents, and that's how they'll get reelected. Stay locals, Kristen Hahn says. Yep. Kevin Sheridan, I thank you as well. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.